Today we're going to be speaking about how to prepare your PEX for long-lasting life and how to maintain it between prints. So first of all, why do we have to scuff the PEX surface? Everybody wants to know. There's basically four reasons. The first reason is you're going to get better adhesion. Things like PLA, um, ABS, nylon. When you scuff, you're giving it some micro grooves that the print wants to stick on more so you'll have more of a mechanical grip and it's really going to perform a lot better second of all it's going to provide better release of those filaments that like the grip too much such as pex and asa these filaments have a similar molecular structure to pex and pei they're going to want to eat into the plate and by scuffing you will prevent a lot of that sticking and bonding the third reason is it's going to keep the contaminants off between prints. Whenever you're printing with a filament, it's laying down the ingredients that are put inside the filament, all the various components, not just the base component, but also oils, fats, elastomers, uh, elements to avoid that it absorbs humidity. There's so many different components in each filament. And those get deposited on the surface and eventually build up and will either create too much bonding or could even prevent you from getting a grip. And the last reason for wanting to scuff it is because you'll create a uniform surface that lasts for the life of your build plate. It's always going to be repetitive. You'll always have that same surface. So let's talk about what you're going to need in order to scuff your build plate. First of all, you're going to need either a steel wool pad. Triple zero steel wool is what we recommend. The kind from the hardware store, not the... Um, pots and pans scrubber with detergent on it. You absolutely don't want to get stuff for home care. It's more from the hardware store. Or you're going to want to get a Scotch-Brite 7447 or 7446 pad. Those are the red or green pads, once again, available from hardware stores. You could buy our composite abrasive from Lambam. We call this the CAP, the cap. And uh, we'll be showing you how to use it with this. They're all pretty much equal, the same process. You're definitely going to need some IPA. We keep them in either a dispenser bottle or a spray bottle to make it a lot easier for us. You'll see our process between prints. We always have a bottle of this around so that we can get to the print and clean it. You're going to want to have some paper towel because we always use fresh paper towel. We never use shop rags, microfiber cloths, wipes, because these are going to repropagate the same contaminants you've taken off back onto the build plate. Lastly, you're going to want a spatula with rounded corners. I have a small video on YouTube showing how to quickly round those corners. This is a great way to get rid of the purge lines and any stuck filament without gouging your build surface. You rarely need it for the print if you observe the removal techniques we're going to show you, but this is going to allow you to quickly remove any uh, purge lines, like I said, brims or really thin layers and get back to printing. You probably also want to keep on hand some glue stick. Uh, glue stick is great not just to increase um, base layer adhesion for hard to print filaments like polypropylene, like nylon, but also it creates a barrier layer for PETG and ASA when you get too much sticking. So when in doubt, use glue stick. If you want to use it without glue stick, we have plenty of tips. We'll link them down below of how to dial in your printer to print these hard to print filaments without glue stick. And regardless, you're going to have to do a little test. We recommend in the corner of the build plate with that hard to print material or that material that likes to bond and make sure your specific spool and brand doesn't bond to the PEX. If it does, go to glue stick. Okay, so let's get to the first preparation of the build plate. This is the most intensive one. It's going to take four to seven minutes. Uh, after this, the maintenance between prints is a number of seconds. It's really fast. You want to do this right. So you're going to want to work on a flat surface. You need to remove the protective film. If you're not sure if the protective film came up, take a piece of tape and put it over the corner of the build plate and lift from there, and you're going to find that's the protective film. Once you remove the protective film, you have that really beautiful glossy PEX. Once again, we do not recommend printing on this. You're going to damage it easily, um, even if you print really carefully at the right temperatures. Eventually, you're going to scratch that surface, and then you're not going to have a shiny PEX anymore. 
So we do recommend going ahead and preparing it. And I'm going to show you how. So first of all, we're going to wet the build plate. When you wet it while you're scuffing, it helps to remove the small debris that is removed from the PEX and stop it from being the abrasive that scratches this too deeply. If you're working with a composite pad, you can use water. If you're working with steel wool, you need to use alcohol because it can create rust on the steel wool with water. So we're just going to use alcohol. We have it right here. I'm going to spray a little glob of alcohol. And I'm going to go at it with circular motions for about four to six minutes. I want to keep on going until we don't see the individual scratches. This pad is going to put in scratches to the surface. And by going for a full five to seven minutes, we're going to eventually create so many scratches, you're not going to see them anymore. It's just going to become a beautiful satin uniform finish. So I'll let this go to fast forward and we'll see what it looks like in a couple of minutes. Okay, it's been less than a minute. I just want to show you what happens at this point, what it's going to look like. We're definitely going to need a little more scuffing, but I just want to show you we don't want to end there. I'm going to clean this off with alcohol and paper towel to try to give you a visual. And it's looking pretty nice semi satin but if you look at it you're going to still see those individual scratches and that is still acceptable but if you go a little more you're going to find we're going to get a really nice beautiful satin finish so let me go on and finish this up You will notice that while I'm doing this, I'm trying to work the center and the corners equally, I'm not trying to overwork only one area. I'm going around the edges, around the corners. So let's have a look. It's only been two minutes. Time is going to be variable depending on your own arm strength how big the build surface is, but this is looking pretty darn good. So I'm just taking away, you can see on the pad, there's already a lot of just shavings from the PEX. I'm trying to remove that with paper towel. So at this point, it's got a right, real nice satiny finish. If you look closely, there's still some scratches, um, but this is gonna behave very well. If you really want it perfect, keep going. We've only done it about two or three minutes. I recommend going four to five minutes to get that perfect finish. Okay, so this has just been under two minutes of sanding. Like I said, if we go for four or five minutes, we can really get that uniform. And I'll show you that later. But this is enough to really give you the grip and prevent bonding. And using this between prints, you're gonna eventually unify this out. To is if it was sitting on a table, the back of it might've gotten dirty. In this case, it kind of melted the lacquer of this table. So you do wanna, quickly wash that off and dry it. Make sure it's dry before touching any magnet because the alcohol can destroy the surface finish on the magnets. And that is ready to print with. We'll go ahead and do a full scuff and show it to you in the end, but I do want to show you the process between prints. Okay, so when we take a part off the bill plate, You want to make sure the parts and the plate are cold. If you try to flex off while it's hot, you're still getting a bond because our PEX activates with heat and it's still bonding to the part and that could cause damage. So you want to make sure it's completely cooled. Once that it is cooled, you don't want to use a scraper or pry these things off. You want to use the flex of the bill plate to pop them off. The flex won't move these purge lines or thin brims because they're just too thin. They're going to flex with it, but the solid parts will. So I'm just going to flex in a couple directions. I try not to get my fingerprints all over the thing. Okay. I'm going to flex a little bit more. Centers are holding. Okay. And these are off. We can see on the plate, you could kind of see the outline, and that's from the oils of the silky filaments bleeding through. That's what we're going to be cleaning off. And you can see how gorgeous the backs are. You're not going to see 
those scratch lines put in from the scuffing. It's still shiny. Let me turn these things over. I think I could have done a little better in dialing in the first layer so they were a little closer and melted together, but you could see there there is no remnant of the scuff lines. So anybody who's worried about that, you still get a shiny, beautiful bottom on these things. Now let's talk about the process. We removed our parts, and this should only be a couple second process. We did make this cap holder and plate holder. This works real well with bamboo sized plates, but it'll work with any plate basically. Um, we're going to take the beveled side up, the flat side down, and we're just going to lean it against that purge line and just lift it off, and it's that easy. And this way, we're never scratching the plate with a spatula. You can rub this on there. This is not going to scratch the plate. Now we're going to hit it with our isopropyl alcohol and our cap pad or steel wool for five seconds, really. And we're just trying to get rid of any contaminants. I see a little bit of a purge line. Any contaminants that were left from the previous print. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're done. And now all we have to do is clean this a few times with new IPA, new paper towel. I'm removing the contaminants I put on. I'm throwing that out. I'm getting one more piece of paper towel. I'm sorry that you need to use paper towel, but this is the best way. If you want to for the last round, you bend the paper towel in half and use the back for the final. And there we go. We've got a fresh PX plate to go back to printing with. We can put that on the machine and print again. It's really a five second process. If you have all your tools out in front of you, you have an alcohol bottle, you can keep it on a mini slap if you want to. You have your spatula, you have your base abrasive pads, you're back to printing in seconds. By the way, if you did use glue stick, this washes off just with warm water in the sink. Go to the sink with warm water, a clean sponge, and it'll dissolve off both the flexi plate and the part and leave no remnant. Don't be afraid to use this. For our powder painted PEI, it doesn't really require any initial prep because we have powder painted this and cooked it in an oven at very high temps and we're using gloves to avoid any finger oils from going on there. If you do touch it with your finger, you're going to want to wash it with some alcohol and paper towel. Between prints, same thing. Remove any remnants of small layer lines with a rounded cornered spatula. And then here you can just simply, if you see no halo of the previous print, use a little bit of IPA, clean paper towel. If you do see a halo of your previous print, you could use some IPA and the cap. In this case, you don't want to go too heavy because we don't want to break the, the points off of the, the PEI. But something just like that, and then same cleaning process of a couple of hits of alcohol and a couple passes of fresh paper towel. And you're going to preserve the grip of the powder painted Ultem forever. Now, Wham Bam uses true Ultem PEI. It's a very, very high-end Ultem, and we use it on our same high-quality steel plates that we do our PEX. Um, so they're never going to rust from the inside. They're not going to flake off, and that Ultem will provide incredible grip for life. Just take care of it between prints. As promised, here is the PEX sheet after about four minutes of scuffing. It's really smooth and clean. Once again, the more you use it, the more those scratches disappear. But even with this layer of scratch, you're still going to have very silky, beautiful bottoms of your prints. And this is printed on metallic. So metallic filament, you really get a chance to see that. And you're going to keep your Ultem PEI plates to the top. A few things to add. Should your build plate ever become so contaminated that you're really just having a hard time getting it to grip, it's probably from oils from the filaments or your fingers, especially if you haven't been following our maintenance guide. In that case, you'll want to bring it to the sink, pour some pure vinegar over the top, scuff it a little bit, or even strong dish soap like Dawn, the unscented, non-hand uh, moisturizing dish soap. Rinse it off with water. 
final step, you can use some alcohol and that should restore it. That should remove the oils and greases and get it back to printing. Okay, so that's our thorough process for preparing your build plates. Please do let us know in your comments uh, if you found this helpful uh, and if you'd like to see anything else. We're going to leave a lot of links in the description about best print temperatures, uh, how to maintain your build plates. Anyway, thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing your comments and your likes.